Hey, what's up friends? Dr. Shepard here. I want to talk to you today about a question that I get a lot, which is, well, how do I know if I'm smart enough to be a doctor? And it's a question that I've wondered a lot before myself and sometimes still wonder. But the short answer, if you don't want to watch the whole video, is yeah, you're probably smart enough to be a doctor. The reason I say that is because you really only need average intelligence to be a good doctor. And honestly, I think beyond intelligence, like yes, the, the smarter or more like naturally intelligent you are, maybe things are going to come a little bit easier to you in medical school and beyond. But there are a lot of other really important factors to being a good doctor, and I would argue a lot of other factors that are way more important than your intelligence. So if you want some hard proof that you do not have to be smart to be a doctor, I once burned toast three times in a row. Three times, it's a lot. So honestly, if you are in college and you're getting through any of the pre-med prerequisite courses, then you're definitely smart enough to be a doctor, no questions asked. I know I have followers that are in high school or even younger, and for you guys, I would say if you're able to balance good grades and extracurriculars, like you're definitely smart enough. I wasn't able to do all of that stuff and honestly did pretty poorly in school before college. If you haven't yet, you can hear a little bit more of my story, but honestly, I thought middle and high school was harder in a lot of ways than med school and residency. Okay, so if intelligence is not the secret magic ingredient for doing well in medical school, there must be other things, right? So I think there's a bunch of other traits and characteristics of people that do really well in medical school. And honestly, I would say those are more important to hone as you're going through middle, high school, college, whatever it may be, whenever you decide to pursue this journey, working on these traits traits and these characteristics, I think will help a lot more than worrying about your intelligence level. So the first thing I would say that I think really helped me throughout my medical journey was just being conscientious. And it might seem like that's a trait you can't work on, but you really can. So conscientiousness just refers to wanting to do what's right and working really hard and diligently and thoroughly and doing a really good job at things. So yeah, I think this is a trait that comes easier to some people, but I do think it's something that you can work on and improve. So working on good habits early, like making sure that when you're doing things, you're doing your best, making sure that you keep your word when you say you're gonna do something, making sure that you are doing a good job on something that you know is important. I'll give you a really good example of what not to do. So I remember being in my organic chemistry lab in college and we would have to take these quizzes at the beginning of the class to make sure that I guess that we had read the lab over for the day and they were like super duper hard. <laughs> um, and as the TA would like walk around the room, you had these like big lab dividers. So people were always sharing notes and looking in their lab manuals, which you weren't supposed to do. So that's a really good example of not building conscientiousness. What you need to do instead is make sure that you're adjusting your study habits and working really hard on the labs rather than just straight up cheating. I know that people got away with that, you know, in that class, for example, but I do truly believe that it catches up to you over time, especially if you really do go on to be a physician. You're going to run into times where you can't cheat on that stuff, where you can't cut corners. So for example, all of the standardized testing that we take is rigorously monitored. So you have to turn your pockets inside out every time you go in and out of the exam room and there's cameras. Anyways, trust me, it's gonna catch up to you. All right, so another trait that I think can be really helpful for a future doctor is building discipline. Again, while it might be easier for some people to be disciplined than others, it's also a habit that you can work on. So you've probably seen in my other videos that I talk a lot about the importance of making tiny habit changes to kind of push you closer to your goals. And every time you make a tiny habit change like that, or every time you do something that you kind of don't want to do, you're building discipline. So this doesn't really have to be a miserable process. I'll give you an example. Say you are writing a paper and say you told yourself, okay, I'm just gonna write for a half hour, then I'll be done, I can go play video games or whatever. If you wanted to build a habit of discipline, you could take that five minutes longer. So, you know, maybe normally you would tap out around 30 minutes, but this time you push it slightly longer, so 35 minutes. So it doesn't have to be a huge jump, 
but just finding ways that you can be a little bit more disciplined in your day-to-day -day life actually builds up over time and discipline is definitely a muscle that you can flex and get stronger. Being passionate is also hugely important if you want to become a physician. And I think this can be the most obvious in people who are just going into medicine for the wrong reasons. So maybe their parents want them to be a doctor or they think they can make a lot of money that way or whatever it may be. It's really hard to get through the marathon that is medical training if you're not really passionate about helping people and about science and about medicine in general. So you can't pull passion for medicine out of nowhere. I don't think that's possible. But what you can do is if you know that medicine's your passion, but you start to get burnt out by some of the rigor of training, or like for me, when I was in pre-med courses, you know, some of them really don't seem to relate much at all to medicine. Um, so it can get kind of discouraging and kind of can suck your energy. So those times are great times where you can build your passion for medicine and kind of remind yourself of why you're doing it. I think that having a really strong passion and reminding yourself continually of your passion for medicine is a great way to get through a lot of the struggles that you're gonna face. So for example, when I was struggling through those pre-med courses, I was also volunteering in a nursing home and going and sitting with those patients would remind me that there was a bigger purpose and that I had an end goal and it wasn't just about organic chemistry, but that there were real people behind it and that one day I was gonna be taking care of these people. So the next ingredient that I think can be really helpful for budding doctors is just learning good study habits. That's a great thing that you can just very easily research on YouTube. Maybe I'll do a video on how to do some good study habits, but just briefly like learning about things like the Pomodoro technique, learning about how you learn best as a student. So for myself, for example, I do really well with a combination of different sensory modalities when I'm studying. So if I can look at a lecture while also listening to it, I find that really helpful, for example. Some of my classmates really could only study by doing practice questions. So that kind of stuff, you know, you'll definitely have to change it up for med school because nobody goes into med school with a perfect study plan for medical school. It's just such a different beast that you kind of have to adjust once you get there. But learning how you study best and working on those good study habits can be really helpful. Okay, so last piece of advice and last ingredient that I think everybody needs if they're going to go into medicine is figuring out a way to balance and preserve your mental health. Of course I went there. I had to, you guys saw it coming, right? So I think everything that I just talked about and all of the traits like discipline, good study habits, like focusing, all of that stuff can be taken way too far and often gets taken way too far by pre-meds, by med students, by residents. And that's why there's such a high rate of burnout in people who are in the medical field. So again, this isn't something that you can totally prepare for before you even get into medicine, but you can start making it a habit to prioritize your mental health. So for example, if you feel like you're starting to take on too many extracurricular activities, maybe this isn't a good time to add another one. Or if you're struggling with too many AP courses or something, talking with your parents or your guidance counselor about how you can make some adjustments and feel better about the course load that you're taking. I mentioned that I spent a ton of time studying and definitely was not the life of the party, but honestly being super social has not always been a big thing for me. I'm more of an introverted person. I, I really enjoy spending time alone, but if you are an extra introverted person, you have to find ways to continue to engage with other people even when you're really busy. So building in that social time if you're someone who needs that. For me, I really benefit from some time alone, like I said, and also from exercising and meditating. I figured out partway through medical school that it really wasn't manageable unless I kept up those good coping skills that I had built. Even though things like exercising, meditating seemed like a really hard thing to do if I I was working all day and then having to come home and study, I really found that I needed to make time for them. So learning how you can prioritize those things and even what those things are, like what are the things that fill your cup? What are the things that you can enjoy and that you can come away 
from feeling refreshed. So as always, thank you for watching. I hope that was helpful. I know that this is kind of a nebulous concept and can be really difficult to actually put some of this stuff into practice. But what I want you to take away from this is that your intelligence is really not the key when going to medical school. If you're wondering that, you're probably smart enough for medical school. But other things are more important. So by far and away, good mental health, good habits, those are the most important things. And then on top of that you can start to build up more discipline more focus build your passion for medicine and find ways to integrate that into your day all right as always thank you for watching if you liked this video please hit like and please hit subscribe if you aren't already hit the notifications bell so you know when i post a new video and let me know in the comments what else you guys want to talk about all right see you guys later